This is Jay Big Ticket 23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to optimize and upgrade your HP Z420 workstation uh, for gaming and other high end computing. Um, so, the first thing you want to do is go to GreenPCGamers.com, click on the blog page, and search Z420. This will bring up an option called HP Z420 Gaming Computer and Other Upgrades. Everything we talk about in this video will be on this blog page. Um, actually everything and more. So if you have a specific budget in mind um, and you want to upgrade your system to optimize it for gaming, um, you'll be able to go through this page and pick components based off of your budget and uh, optimize it for gaming or other high-end computing. Um, one thing to note before you even consider upgrading your HP Z420 workstation, you want to make sure you have either a 600 watt power supply or more. Now, 600 watt is stock. So, um, when I say or more, you would have to install like a third party upgrade. We have done a 700 watt power supply upgrade for the Z420. We've done a video for it. Um, so, check out some of our other videos and you can watch that. Um, as kind of a prerequisite for uh, for upgrading your Z420 for gaming. All right, so let's get to the actual gaming build. Um, so our Z420 already had a decent processor and memory already installed. Um, so the upgrades that we really did on this were an NVMe, a graphics card, and uh, in this case, a power supply upgrade. All right, so the specs that we have installed, we have an Intel Xeon E5 2637V2 proc installed. Um, gets close to 4 gigahertz with max turbo frequency. Uh, we have 16 gig of RAM, DDR3, 1866 megahertz. We have a 256 gig SATA solid state drive as our boot device. Um, and then as you can see, one of our big upgrades was the 500 gig NVMe.2 solid state drive. Uh, we installed an EVGA NVIDIA GTX 1080 graphics card. And we couldn't have done that if we didn't upgrade our power supply uh, to the EVGA 700 watt power supply. Because the 600 watt power supply was just not quite enough. Um, the, the 1080 uh, draws, well, can draw up to 300 watts of power. Um, and we, uh, we definitely needed a little bit more than the 600 watt to accommodate that power supply. Um, so um, just another reminder before you even try to do any of these upgrades, make sure you have this at least the 600 watt power supply. So if you do have the 600 watt power supply, uh, go back to that greenpcgamers.com blog page. We'll show you the graphics cards that you can install with the 600 watt power supply. There's kind of there's a threshold for each graphics card, um, and if you even if you buy adapters to give it enough power, um, there's a good chance that you're going to fry your power supply eventually if you don't upgrade it. All right, so here's our Z420 workstation. This is a refurb system. You're going to see it's pretty scratched up, um, but we don't really care that much because the performance is pretty awesome. This is. This is, I mean, going to turn into a 100, uh, 100 FPS uh, gaming system. Here's our NVMe, um, our GTX 1080, and here's a little bit closer look at the 1080. The auxiliary power there is required. Again, we we did already install a 700 watt power supply into another in another video. So if you need to see that video, check it out on our other videos. Uh, here's where we're going to install our graphics card NVMe. Um, here's the other component slots, and as you can see, here's our 700 watt power supply that's a little bit inset because, um, like I said, check out that other video. All right, so let's remove our side panel. And this is what the inside of the Z420 looks like. So this is a single socket CPU uh, system. Uh, we have PCIe X16 slot, and here's our solid state drive that's installed. Um, there are eight slots for memory. We have 16 gig installed. Here's our processor, uh, and here's that upgraded power supply. You, you might be wondering how the power supply is sticking in there. Um, we use some command strips to hold it in. Um, here's our auxiliary power for the 8-pin power for the GTX 1080 that we're going to install. All right, so here's our 1080 graphics card. This system has plenty of room to fit this actual card. And because of our upgraded power supply, we're able to give it plenty of power. All right, so we need to remove our PCI retention clips or remove the bracket that holds it or locks it into place. And that's done by those two little green clips. All right, so now we are actually going to drop our card into place. Now, this card's really heavy. 
So you basically just need to line it up and obviously remove the PCI blanks for the, for the full car because it's going to take up two slots. So you line it up. And then all you have to do is drop it into place. And it's heavy, so it'll drop into place pretty easily. And then you have to plug in your 8-pin auxiliary power. Now, if you forget to plug your power in, don't worry. Um, on post, which is that black screen when you boot up, it'll halt on post if you don't plug this in and, 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 and remind you to plug it in. All right, so we're plugged in. All right, now we're going to install an NVMe solid-state drive. Now, something that's really important is you cannot boot to an NVMe.2 solid state drive on a Z420 workstation. So if you were thinking that you're going to be able to do that, you can't do it. Um, so you're probably thinking why, why install it? Um, well, the reason why you install it is because you can still use it as a secondary storage device and it's three to six times faster than a conventional SATA solid state drive. So it's, it's crazy fast. Um, and so it's a great place to store any large programs, files, or games in our case because uh, you can open them up quite a bit faster than you can with the conventional SATA um, 7.2K drive or regular solid-state drive. So um, if you've never used uh, NVMe.2 solid-state drive, uh, it will absolutely change your life. So definitely consider installing it if you had the budget for it. If you don't have the budget, you know, save up for it. The GPU is more important when it comes to gaming. So here's our... NVMe.2 solid state drive. Now this system doesn't have a slot on board, so we do have to use an adapter card. Uh, we do have a recommended adapter card on greenpcgamers.com um, as well as recommended NVMe.2 solid state drives, depending on capacity. So we're gonna mount this card above the graphics card uh, because we wanna give the graphics card plenty of room to breathe should it need to use the cooling fans. So we'll mount it right above. It's a really light card. It installs really quickly. And at this point, we've installed our two cards that we're going to that we're going to install. Um, we'll go ahead and put our uh, PCI retention clip back on to lock those parts into place. And now we've got everything installed. We already had a 256 gig solid state drive. That's our boot device. Um, so everything's installed. Now we just need to put our side panel back on. And basically boot into Windows. We already had Windows installed on our 256 gig solid state bootable drive. Um, we need to go into Windows and do a few things before we can actually start using the system. Um, so here's what the back of the chassis looks like. There's our 1080. There's our NVMe.2 solid state drive. Um, plenty of slots, plenty of active ports, great for gaming. All right, so we booted into Windows now. First thing you wanna do is go to nvidia.com um, and pick out your graphics card driver. Um, so uh, because we normally do NVIDIA cards, we're going to go to NVIDIA. If you did install an ATI card, definitely go to ATI. There's an option to auto detect your GPU if you're not comfortable picking your graphics card driver. Um, it takes like five, 10 minutes, or you can go ahead and find it manually like we are doing. Um, so whether you install like a 1050, a 1060, 1070, 1080, or an RTX card, um, your driver will be here and you want to get you want to get the latest driver so you can optimize for gaming. All right, now we chose to do the install with the GeForce Experience because that'll allow us to auto-optimize our games um, based off of our, our CPU and our GPU and our memory. Um, next thing we need to do is we need to uh, basically assign a, a letter path to our NVMe.2 solid state drive. So we've gone, uh, we've right-clicked on Start. And then we've gone to a disk management and we found our drive and we're just calling it super fast drive. And we basically set that up so that we can use that for our game libraries. So that's really all there is to this gaming build. Again, use greenpcgamers.com as a resource based off your budget to upgrade your system. If you have any questions, please comment below. Um, please consider subscribing to the channel if this video was helpful to you. That's how we know we're doing a good job and that we should keep making these videos. Um, also, if you like free giveaways, um, please like GreenPCGamers.com on Facebook uh, for monthly giveaways. About mid-month, we do a giveaway every single month. Um, and we would love to see you like the page and, and uh, be included in the giveaways. Uh, thank you so much for watching.